Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got some really, really interesting news. And just like that, Nick Walker fired Matt Jansen again. Is anybody really surprised by this? I mean, maybe because they stopped working a while ago and they got back together and Nick just fired him again? Yeah, there is that, but really, what happened this year with so many different athletes, we're gonna talk about them in a second, but like after what happened with Nick at the New York Pro, after what he brought to that stage, and after dropping out of the Mr. Olympia a week out because he wasn't in shape, I mean, this was a, a logical decision, of course he fired him. So if you go to Nick Walker's YouTube channel and you check out the comment section of the last video he posted, you will find this comment. So somebody said, Nick, please leave Matt, you're too good for him. And he replied, he said, I no longer work with Matt. As you guys know, one week out of Mr. Olympia, Nick dropped this video. It was him and Matt Jensen both uh, talking about the reasons why Nick is dropping out. Nick was just sitting there with his double or, or triple chin and uh, saying that his body is not responding for some reason. And after that, there were rumors that basically were... Not, they were never said in any video online, but it's something that is talked about in an in inner bodybuilding circle. Basically, Matt actually told Nick that his gear was fake. Yesterday, Quint Beastwood or uh, Quinton Araya made a video, I actually made a whole video about that as well, uh, and he said there is at least 11 other people who can confirm that Matt told them exactly the same thing when he failed to bring them in shape, that their gear was fake. He told the same thing to Quinton Araya as well. And even though he didn't say that in this video with Nick, he was all like, uh, the reason why Nick is not responding is because he became a better person, <laughs> he fixed his uh, relationships, and now that he mended all the relationships and so on, his body is finally stress-free, and now he doesn't want to respond, it responds better in a stressful environment. And this is not the first video where Matt is saying that Nick was a bad person before, and now that he went back with Matt Jensen, now he's a better person, less selfish person, this and that. And Nick is always just sitting there and agreeing with that, never really saying anything bad about Matt, but after what happened this year with uh, Nick, with uh, Sean Clarida, with uh, Quint Beastwood, with some other people as well, everybody, basically the whole fitness industry is calling out Matt, finally, and it seems like Nick is finally seeing things uh, more clearly. Now, I don't know when Nick stopped working with Matt, this is the first time he said this, maybe they stopped working together during this prep actually, or maybe it happened like yesterday, who knows? But the truth is that Matt, even though he did have a lot of success before, lately, in the past year or two, he has been failing badly with delivering with his athletes, with his top athletes, professional bodybuilders. I don't know what kind of successes he has with amateurs or with his uh, uh, lifestyle clients, but as far as the top guys, the professional bodybuilders, no, man, forget about it. Like, he's failing left and right. Now, as you guys know, Matt Jensen has become a really successful businessman, and he also shied away from bodybuilding lately. He used to be a competitive bodybuilder. He was never great, he was never good, really. Uh, he was competing at a national level. He wasn't really close to winning his pro card, but he was going for it. He was, he was doing it. And uh, even though he wasn't massive, he still trained, he still looked big for his genetics, but recently he moved to triathlon and he lost a bunch of weight. By the way, what happened to his calves? <laughs> his calves are completely melted for some reason. I mean, this is completely off topic, you don't have to be in great shape or to bodybuild yourself to be a good coach. Like, look at the other top coach, like Honey Rambert, like Stefan Kinzel, uh, Samson's wife as well, like, they're not competitive bodybuilders, and they're probably not doing bodybuilding themselves, so it doesn't have to mean anything, but, you know, usually when you shy away from bodybuilding like that, completely, and you focus on another sport, and also you're focused on business so much, can you really be a good coach? Well, in Matt Jetson's case, no. No, you cannot. Now, it's not like Matt failed with every single client. I mean, recently, Brett Wilkin won a show, but I, I gotta say, Brett was also much smaller than I thought he would be. You know, based on his uh, updates during the prep, I thought he was gonna be freaking insanely big. 
But no, no, that wasn't the case. He was definitely on, on a smaller, on a flatter side. And also I heard something, and don't quote me on this, I don't know how true this is, it's just a rumor. But I heard that uh, in the final week, in the peak week for this show, Brad didn't communicate much with Matt Jensen, he couldn't get a hold of him, he wasn't available, so Brad kind of picked himself for this show. And also, like, as far as training programs and food and everything... I heard that Brett is doing a lot of stuff himself, you know, he's writing his own plans. I don't know how true that is, that's the rumor that is going around. Another example of uh, Matt's client is uh, Ian Valier, a very good example as well. When was this, last year or two years ago? You guys know that Ian uh, was working with Patrick Tour for many years, and with Patrick he achieved basically all of his biggest successes. You know, top uh, seven twice at the Mr. Olympia, won like four or five shows. And then he switched, he went to Matt Jensen, they did one show, and uh, Ian showed up with his chest completely flat and with that crazy separation in the middle. And after that show, Ian retired from bodybuilding at a young age. He was like maybe 30 years old, something like that. Maybe like 31, 32, very young. So, I don't know if Matt had any effect on, on him retiring or uh, on his chest or whatever, but it definitely wasn't the best Ian we saw, and he received a lot of backlash, a lot of criticism, because he won a show, another controversial win for Ian, but arguably one of his worst uh, packages he brought to the stage, and after that he retired. We all know what happened with Quinton Raya, you know, showed up 20 pounds lighter than uh, he was uh, two or three years before working with Matt Jensen. After he was pushed in his off-season like never before, had trouble sleeping, had trouble breathing, uh, and in the end he showed up smaller and flatter and worse than ever. Sean Clarita as well, you guys know about that, he showed up smaller and flatter than ever before, really. He looked the way he looked like five years ago, and Matt actually made a post after the pre-judging, saying that the judges wanted this, and they brought what the judges wanted. The judges just wanted to see him a little bit tighter and with better bit section control, not like 10 pounds smaller and super flat. But yeah, again, Matt fails to realize his mistakes, and he blames it on everybody else. In Sean Clarita's case, it's the fault of the judges, and I don't know if he told him that his gear was fake as well, but he told that to Nick Walker, to Quinton Araya and like Quinton says 11 other people at least so far Matt did not say anything about the situation there is an avalanche on, 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 on social media about him everybody is commenting on, on Nick's post on Matt's post everywhere basically all the Instagram pages but Matt is still staying silent. I wonder what kind of statement is he gonna make. I can't wait for that. I hope he will actually say something and not just completely stay silent. If he does, I'm gonna make a video about it as soon as possible, guys. So stay tuned. But uh, Nick also posted this uh, photo today. And uh, in the caption, he says, Best day of the week. And no, it's not the best day because he fired Matt Jensen. <laughs> That's not what he means. He's talking about the back day because he loves Monday and back day. If you guys follow him, you know what he's talking about. But then he says, new week, new beginnings. Same goal, driving in the chaos. So yeah, it's a new beginning for Nick. He is no longer working with Matt Jensen. Who's gonna be his next coach? I don't know. And I'm sure his environment is uh, stressful right now, it's chaotic, because, again, the same thing happened with Matt Jansen, I don't know if it is gonna affect his uh, sponsorship by Raw and Revive, I, I hope, but I believe that Nick was smarter this time around, and that he didn't create a, a problem with uh, Matt, I hope he uh, stopped working with him in a polite, in a normal way, so he can stay friends, or at least on good terms with Matt, and still be sponsored by his company, but just find a different coach, because apparently Matt is not capable of working with his top guys anymore, because he keeps failing one athlete after another. I wonder how many other clients of Matt Jensen are gonna leave him as well, for example Justin Shire, who is usually quite vocal, so far, he didn't say anything, I'm expecting a, a podcast or at least some kind of a story where he's gonna address this, I'm pretty sure he's gonna say his uh, piece, but you guys remember that the last year when he competed at the, New at, at the Chicago Pro, actually, you know, he was also probably not as good as we thought he would be, 
You know, he wasn't in great shape. He was not conditioned, especially in his lower body, especially in, from behind. Like, his glutes were soft, his quads were not dug out. He ended up winning that show because the competition wasn't that tough. But, you know, he did not peak very well. I'm sure he could have looked better. But he trusts Matt Jensen. Uh, at that point, he was still, uh, you know, he, he, he never really criticized him for anything because I'm sure Matt told him that he's just not big enough, he needs to grow more, he needs to progress more, uh, he looked the best way he could and that's it. You know how Matt likes to gaslight people and just not tell them what the truth is and, you know, make them uh, believe it's their own mistake. But hey, at least Nick Walker is not buying it and people are calling out Nick a lot for dropping out of the Mr. Olympia, but who is really to be blamed here? I mean, we don't know the full story. Maybe it's Nick who messed it up somehow. But I doubt that, guys. I really doubt that. I don't know Nick personally. I know him as well as you do. But I'm pretty sure Nick is a very, very hard worker. I don't think there's anybody really who is more driven than Nick. I'm pretty sure he did all he needed to do, all Matt told him to do. And they failed to deliver. And not to deliver a good package, but completely to, to get in shape. Look at him right here, guys. He's supposed to be one week out right here. Look at that double or triple chin once again. Like He looks like he is deep into his offseason. I mean, can you really be that off with your client? I mean, they started prepping for the Mr. Olympia since the New York Pro. They had enough time to troubleshoot to figure out what is the issue to fix it i don't think nick has uh, fake gear and i also heard the uh, stories i don't know how true this is again but like people are saying that the source that he's using is very good very reliable so it's probably not that i don't buy into that and that whole thing with the uh, stressful environment i doubt it's that either I think it's either Matt not being really focused on Nick's prep and not really paying attention to what is happening to his physique, but it's probably more likely that uh, Matt just doesn't know how to fix these issues, that he had uh, a lot of luck so far, that he had like genetic elite guys who would respond to anything and everything went smoothly, but as soon as the problem started happening, he didn't know how to fix them. And uh, the last time Nick uh, stopped working with Matt, he actually went to Dom Super Sliced. And I think that was probably the most productive uh, offseason that Nick had because his waist size was uh, down. You know, his midsection looked better. And uh, in the end, uh, Matt prepped him for the Mr. Olympia. And Nick looked uh, probably his absolute best. He was third that year. Based on what I heard from Dom Super Sliced on different podcasts, uh, Nick completely just uh, ghosted him. He never really stopped that partnership, he just went back to Matt, and he never really mentioned Dom Super Sliced again. He never gave him the credit for this look right here. But uh, while Nick and Dom worked together, Dom was very vocal, he was talking a lot about how he was very much focused on improving uh, Nick's digestion and uh, shrinking his waist down, and they shrunk it uh, two, two and a half inches, that's what he said. And I think that's the most important thing that Nick can do, basically. That's what kind of a coach he needs. Somebody who can just help him with the midsection. That's the only thing. And of course, get him in, in contest condition. I mean, how difficult would that be? Uh, I mean, as long as he's healthy, as long as his uh, gut is healthy, he's gonna get in shape and his midsection is gonna look better. So that's the kind of coach he needs. Not somebody who's gonna just force him to grow as much as possible and just get him shredded with using all kinds of crazy compounds. And I heard a lot of uh, crazy stories about Matt, uh, you know, what kind of stuff he likes to use. I'm not gonna even talk about that right here. But Nick needs somebody who's gonna be more focused on him and who knows how to fix problems, who knows how to work around these issues, somebody with uh, more knowledge. You guys know that Brett Wilkin pulled out of Mr. Olympia last year because, why? Because he had stomach issues, gut issues. He had trouble training and doing anything for like a year. He managed to fix that, but a problem started happening when he was working with Matt and Justin Shire as well. He also had some bad gut issues. I don't know what exactly Matt is doing, but from what I heard, he's a very high-protein guy. So, that could be it. I don't know, guys. You can tell me down below in the comment section who do you think should be Nick's next coach. But as far as Matt Jansen, these guys are done. Nick Walker fired him once again 
We'll see what's the next plan for Nick, but I think this is definitely a smart decision. Once again, guys, tell me down below what do you think about this whole situation. For more updates on this topic, stay tuned, subscribe to this channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.